what up everyone back once again with another twitch dream draw recap video sped up for your enjoyment so you don't have to sit and watch three and a half hours of this uh so this week we're doing another metal album in my series of redrawn classic metal album covers and we're doing the album dope throne by the band electric wizard who are stone of doom sludge legends really in the field from dorset england pretty big home of metal england so let's jump right into it and i could see kicking it off just sketching it out uh i've been working pretty much directly from the album cover looking at that as i'm drawing it there are key bits and pieces that i'm changing here and there so obviously this is uh, a hand that's holding the uh device i don't even know if i could say what it is <laughs> if i'm allowed to say what it is um but you can see it's, it's pretty faithful to the album you see once it's finished it's got all the key elements it's got the little hood guys in there don't worry i'm gonna paint them black in a second there we go yep see it's nothing crazy going on um yeah trying to keep the vibe trying to keep the style you know it's got a real cool moody feel to it so i want to pay homage to that and it's pretty faithful in terms of how much black and white splash of red in there but you know just to make it fit with the others while that's happening let's jump into some facts that i found out while searching that about this album so dog throne is out by the band electric wizard and it was released on the 9th of october in 2000 so it's it's got that kind of you know sludgy 70s doomy vibe but it's from the newer era of doom kind of stuff um so the magazine terrorizer declared it the album of the decade for the 2000s which is pretty damn good considering it came out in 2000 um it's also one of metal hammer's top 20 albums of 2000 so it's got some it's a pedigree there so upon reading this you know i found a little bit of stuff out and uh some interesting points from just oborn who's the main singer guitarist lyricist of the band so he actually described this album as part of a trilogy with the previous two albums that came before that uh the first one being come my fanatics and then after that super coven with Doe Throne as sort of the final piece, crown jewel, you know, to, to cap it all off. Uh, funnily enough, the the title Dope Throne is actually inspired by a story that Just had heard about someone who had a sofa that was stuffed entirely with bags of dope. So it became a dope throne. Pretty pretty silly. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, you know. This like deep dark doomy stuff and then it's like oh it's about a couch full of weed that's cool i like it, I like it. Uh, so he actually said uh that most of us were stuck in some kind of drug addiction or alcoholism at the time and it was just pure hate it was us against the world and we wanted to make the most disgusting foul putrid record that anyone had ever recorded so we camped out in the studio and it was literally just wake up consume as much drugs as possible and then just start jamming so i found some other info that said that they only really had three songs going into the studio and most of the album or the rest of the album really was created in the studio so that's what they did they just basically just lived it for how long it took them to record it just making music jamming smoking drinking whatever they're doing just trying to make that gritty dirty big heavy stuff so there was actually a three-year gap between Doe Throne and Supercover and the album before it uh, a lot of that I think kind of said or like you can read into it that there was sort of the members relationships with each other with each other and sort of the way they interacted and their problems with drug addiction alcoholism stuff kind of made a bit of a strain kind of relationship so they weren't really super eager to jump back into the studio doing that kind of stuff again um and as the other time as well like the the way they were working and the way they were kind of set up as a band and their own lives the stuff they're getting on with just sort of made it hard to kind of get a lot of stuff together 
and uh, they said that the a lot of the time their best kind of work and and the way they work as a band comes about by just jamming stuff out so people can't do stuff because they're working or they got other stuff going on then can't really get together the jam to create these new songs you know not all ideas that you might work on in a sort of a jam environment become songs but if that's the way you work and you're not jamming then you're not coming up with songs so what are you going to record uh, just also stated that a lot of the lyrics were inspired by a combination of the hallucinogens that he was sort of into at the time and the hp lovecraft and all that kind of stuff so he would said that he would read hp lovecraft stories and books while he was super high and kind of like extrapolate ideas and create this kind of imagery and stuff which he thought was kind of ironic because hp lovecraft was not a dude who took lots of drugs he wrote all that stuff sober so it's kind of interesting ironic kind of like a dissonance going on there with a super high dude and a super sober dude for those people not super up on hp lovecraft he's an american horror fiction writer kind of guy that's like super famous now you know like a lot of people revere his work and it's had an influence on a lot of stuff but not super popular at the time he was the guy who created the cthulhu mythos a lot of his work is to do with things like cosmicism and things about like how you know the human race is insignificant and as part of the cosmos we're just like a tiny speck of dust you know and it, he sort of created all these things about like these elder gods and crazy immense power over eons and ages and it's really interesting stuff i mean unfortunately he's, he's a bit of a dickhead but uh you know that happens unfortunately sometimes so yeah this is a super popular album and you know shout out to everyone that kind of liked and got into this image that i did on instagram and other formats and stuff because uh, it seems like people really liked my kind of interpretation of it which is really flattering and it's really cool to see um you know i'm just trying to do stuff in my own way that's sort of like an homage it's not really trying to say that i'm doing it better or anything like that it's just sort of like oh if i was to do something like this how would i do it you know and just my own personal spin on it this uh, cover was kind of interesting as well because, you know, if you've seen the source material, it's really quite fuzzy and kind of airbrushy. It wouldn't look out of place on the side of a big black van, you know what I mean? It just, it's got that kind of like stonery, doobie, wizardy vibe that you expect some like, um, you know, long haired type dude with a big ass beard, chugging a beer, kind of would paint on the side of his van, which is totally my jam. I'm into it uh, but it doesn't have a lot of detail so the way I like to work is sort of basing things around sort of detail but also kind of hinting at stuff like uh, you can see with the horns I'm trying to get the feel that the, the horns are turning around the ridges and stuff but I'm not trying to be super specific with the details or with the lines and everything I like to have a little bit of texture a little bit of um, what's the word kind of happy accidents that would happen if you were painting with traditional media i think um that's sort of where i come from using ink and brushes and stuff like that to create work but the more it has this kind of texture textural elements or happy accidents of like bits of the way the bristles go in the brush the more i kind of like it i feel like the less it looks like i did it on purpose the better it looks because I don't want it to look contrived. I don't, I don't want it to look like, you know, it's kind of overly perfect or forcing a style or, or forcing it to look in a certain way. Um, you can see, see here as well, like I'm really starting to get into using different types of brushes, you know, within Photoshop and stuff like that to get different effects, you know. Uh, I started to do this as well before I kind of transitioned doing digital stuff when I was doing traditional stuff. Uh, you know, outlining with a different pen and then blacking in areas with a different type of pen and then having like a dry brush to create sort of fades. You know, um, even sometimes you can like paint on a scrunched up bit of paper and just stamp it on the thing to get like a sort of rocky rough texture. I'm trying to do that kind of thing with the digital stuff. So 
using a more sort of like sort of uh, I don't know how you describe it but kind of like a, a dotty kind of stipplish kind of brush for the clouds in the background to give it that kind of ephemeral sort of floating smoky kind of vibe um, you know it was interesting with this one as well because it's a black and white cover I wasn't exactly sure hundred percent how to work the red in so you'll see I'll actually go back and change the electric wizard logo to gray to better match the original source material and really only use the red for the device that he's holding I'm still not sure if I can say it or not <laughs> and then like the eyes on the hooded guys the priests uh, and and his eyes as well just a little splash color in there some of the other albums that I'm doing there's quite a lot of red uh, some of it is a lot more black and so it's interesting to have the different ratios of black to red to gray in each cover so here it is here's the final you can see that the logo is a little bit more true to the original album just some little things popping off with the red like the the figures with the hoods their eyes his eyes but uh i felt like it kind of captured the vibe pretty well and uh yeah pretty happy with it really happy that people like it you know that's cool for me that's humbling and uh, i'll be back again with another video if you're on the instagram you've probably already seen it but uh, yeah, back next week with a new album and I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Peace.